Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. So last episode, we took our train out for our first freight run. We got ourselves some uh, containers all set up. I still never got around to changing the color of that thing to titanium. Let's actually do that right now before I put it off any longer. Uh, I have been thinking about the the train itself as far as speed goes, and I don't. I think what the problem is is uh, most of the cars in the back they have just uh, hover the air blade set to hover mode. So what the hover mode is doing is it's nullifying any velocity in all directions. So what I think is going on is just because I have them set to hover that they're actually holding back the rest of the train. Whoa, that's a bit of a lag. Yes, my little light show here. But as you can see, it's just up to about here that pushes. Everything else from here back is more or less hold trying to stop it from moving so I think that's what's going on so what I'll do is next time we take this out I was going to offset the blades but I think that's not the issue I think that's what this problem this might be the problem so uh, as you can see I have just a top row on this one set up so next time we go out I'll set all of these to push then this one I'll just set the top ones to push then here I'll do maybe like the first four or five and then three and then two and then maybe a pair at the very end and then maybe we can see get up to at least 40 or 50 but I have a, a very interesting project I want to work on today and you know what I was just about to start recording so it started raining so I slept past the rain and I started recording and now it's raining again but anyways I have an idea for sort of like an Etho style storage system um, I've been trying to think of ways to keep things organized and uh, E more easily accessible without the constant lag and one of the things I've come up with is a spring-loaded system and I've talked about using the hover pads to create springs before and what I have here is uh, both of these all three of these pads are set to hover mode so it's just basically a spinner but this one is constantly pushing it's a bumper uh, that's this one here this switch here is connected to the other two this one here and this one on the other side and you have a con conveyor connector up top and a conveyor connector at the end uh, basically, you're creating your connection. Um, I have this is actually the second prototype I made. This is the first one I made here. Uh, one of the issues I figured out is, in order to use these, in order for them to work, they have to be connected to a container. Uh, originally, I just tried using like an elbow and then just having, or a T section having an elbow of the, the conveyors or the connectors at the end, but it would not register. I could only read that one box until I put the container on it. As soon as I put that container on it, then it completes the circuit. So these, no matter what, have to have some sort of inventory attached to them and for that to work. So then basically what you do is, uh, what was this one set up on? Uh, was there another switch here? Oh, yeah. This was my first one where I made it a little bit bigger. I had two going one way, one going the other way. So when I go and turn it off, Let's go over here. When I turn it off, then the one is on its own, and it's supposed to overcome it, but it's getting stuck for some reason. But anyways, this is the redesigned one. So you just turn it on, it turns over, and then it connects to the other conveyor port over here, disconnecting from that one, and back to the other side. This one's actually a fairly compact design. And what I want to do is I want to basically... I made a list of all the what I believe is going to be the most used items and there's going to be 10 of them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the, st the storage area this way and we're going to make it sort of like a, a longer building. I'm going to re relocate the printers and have them spaced 8 blocks apart because that's the smallest I can make is actually typically I could, could do it on 6 but just because I want to use the ceiling tiles with the conveyor ports I want to do it that way so it's going to be Basically, I'm probably going to have six printers on either side. Ten of them are going to be constantly going with their own miners set up. Maybe two miners. I do want to keep the miners separated because when I open up the box, I don't want any lag at all. I don't care if it's eight or ten different inventories. There's only going to be one setup, which is going to be the, the bulk storage of all the stuff that I won't be using as much, like food items. I might even get the food going into its own system. Uh, yeah, and then there's going to be an access terminal and whatnot, so 
I gotta get everything disconnected here and I'll bring you back when it's time to start ripping everything apart. Wow, it was a good thing I wasn't recording that. Oh, that elbow right there, I just decided to separate these four contain 14 containers off the system because they're basically empty except for this one. It was about a 20, 20 second lag spike when I took that elbow off. I thought the game crashed. Yeah. Well, anyways, I got the power shut off. I got all uh, the other 14 containers turned off. Nothing's running, so I shouldn't have to worry about anything filling up the system except for the refinery, but I don't think we have any water actually available because uh, the water pumps can't keep up. Anyway, uh, actually, we don't need to open that. Let's uh, tear down the wall. Uh, I am going to keep the storage up top. I actually need inventory space, don't I? I always need inventory space. I should go ahead and make that jetpack right now. Yeah, let's go make the jetpack. Get it over and done with. Where's that refinery? Uh, or the army? Is it in here? No. Ah, I hit it in the corner. I think this can be like the last time I use it. No power, of course. Um, no, I don't want to do that. I guess I'll go outside and turn it back on. I'll bring you back. Wow, it's definitely a miserable day. I got about three minutes left. I was actually going to show this. Well, I can. Uh, as you can see, it's raining through the ceiling right now, but if I go through into here, it's fine. I was trying to figure out why it wasn't raining in here, so I went upstairs and I thought maybe it had something to do with the second floor. But no, nothing. You go up, and it rains. You go down one floor, and it doesn't. So, yeah, if you want it, you want a uh, base or a house without any rain, just make it more than one floor high on the inside, you'll be fine. Yeah, so this should almost be done, but I can go ahead and start tearing all this down. And yeah, I'm going to start expanding it. I'm probably going to leave... I might leave this... There's that autosave. Uh, <laughs> I might leave this as like a main area and then have like the printers going here and then as far as the the controls with the control there uh, that's going to be in the floor above it with a container just directly above that and that's how it's all going to be set up so anyways enough chit chat I'll bring you back when I have the room finished okay so I got a bit of a room set up here I decided to go with the white walls keep the uh, white floor and keep the walls brown. Uh, I was sort of thinking of opt automating a little bit more than what I could, but apparently there's a problem with doing some of the stuff I want to do. Like I could do the basic frames, the basic plates, the mechanical parts, uh, the glass, and the circuits, because everything can come off of one un independent mining source. Uh, things like the reinforced frames, they need the, the aluminum. So I'd have to have the aluminum and a miner down, and I probably could do that, but the problem with doing it that way is it would start backfilling into the aluminum container, I don't want that. So that was, was going to be the issue, so I think all the specialty stuff I'm going to have to keep sort of in a separate system, so this will be on its own, this will be on its own, that will be on its own, and these two. Uh, I can do this one. Uh, just get a set up with miner, just do an only carbon, which probably just about anywhere you could drop a miner, get carbon. Uh, the biomass, though, I'm going to have to build like a little logging truck and I'll have to take it out and fill a container full of biomass for that, and then I can just make sure that, that keeps going. Uh, it will take a while to go through, but at the same time, too, we'll have to fill it. And then I think for the ones on the other side, we'll just try to keep that in sort of a more compact system. Uh, as long as I keep those miners and make sure those miners aren't outputting to the containers, we should be okay. But anyways, let's go ahead and start laying down some printers on this side. Actually, I think the... Because they got to get conveyors too. Let's actually do the conveyors first. Now, I was actually here digging a hole earlier. Might as well continue digging it. Actually, let's see if we can try to avoid... I can't avoid auto saves. Let's see if we can actually avoid digging up the terrain. I know I can been planning on putting a train station here, but 
I might put that somewhere else. But let's go in and see what we can get. See how far we are. The best thing is I can use the build vision to find out exactly where I am. Alright, so we are... I think we're in the room. Let's go a little bit more. And there's the floor. So then I just gotta find out where the ones of the containers are on. And hope that I don't make too big of a mess. I can always patch it up a little bit on the outside, but at least it's a bigger better than a big trench I had there before. There oh, there's one. And a little bit of a hole. But let me get it all set up and then I'll bring you back when it's time to start getting the miners set up. Okay. So I got Huge giant underground cavern dug out. Found some iron while I was here, but we'll keep continue using those ones just because I might build something around them. I haven't fig quite figured it out. Um, but what I want to do is because I want to have a, a loading area for a container, is so I want to have a T section here at this one, and this will be for the Mark 1 composites. Uh, make sure we're using orange for these because it's our conveyor color of choice. So that one will have that, and then the rest of them will just be straight down. I don't know, I'm gonna do it evenly on all of them because I gotta start building this one first because the next one's gotta come out further and further every time. Just to make sure that they don't run into each other. Keep it all nice and neat, even though nobody's gonna see it. But we know it's here. Alright, and that's not what I wanted to do, damn you. And like so, and like there. So, I have, hopefully in a straight line, dug a tunnel out there. And then I'm just going to have all six lines coming out. And they're going to come out roughly where you see the pipes coming out there now. And then I'll just have uh, the two going over there for the silicone. That'd be the one for glass, one for circuits. Now on this side here we'll get the uh, three for the mechanical parts, the plating, uh, the frames. And then the one just doing carbon for the Mark 1 fibers, or composites. Anyways, uh, let me uh, lay some pipe work here and I'll bring you back when we're ready to continue on. Okay, so I finally got all the conveyors put in uh, up to this point here. We still gotta get the miners set up. Uh, if you have been with the series for a while, this probably looks a little familiar to you. And yes, I have been feeling a little bit of lag building them, but this is nothing compared to what it was before. But what I want to do is, well, for one, try to avoid it, just removing as much ground as possible, as I've already left a big enough hole in here where I, I gotta fill in. But, so, I got this one set up, this is 50-50 iron carbon, so I done it black, that's gonna be our plating, so, or uh, our frames, and so I thought I'd bring you back for the rest of the process. Actually, I might as well go and, well, I don't have them on my hot bar anyways, so I just gotta make sure that the first one here, because I have them in order that they're going to the floor, so it's number one, number two, number three, number four, so on and so forth. So the first one is going to be the, the frames, or the, the plating. The next one here is going to be, should I just put it right here? Yeah, I'll just put it straight here. Maybe, okay, hopefully we don't lose too much there. The next one's going to go here, and this is going to be for the plating. So yeah, we'll go about here, we'll put an elbow, and see if I can actually get the miner under there. Come on. Alright, now it's actually producing. Uh, you should have seen the mess when I was taking the miners out because I didn't have room for the inventory. And there was about 48 stat, uh, what happened to that switchboard? There was a switchboard here. I must have taken it out. I don't know how I did that. But I had that connected. 
over to here. Alright, so let's see what this one produces. And that is good, and we check and select that. So it's not doing any silicone, we turn uh, connect containers off. And that'll be our plating. So we go ahead and shut that off. Uh, this one will be... No, we want plating, so we'll make the plating white. And then of course conveyors are going to be orange. And then i got to get another one down for mechanical parts. Uh, one that concerns me is the overflow on the carbon on that. Or the, yeah, the carbon. So I might have to put the carbon... I don't know where I'm going to put the carbon. I'm going to have to get a, another container just set up for the excess carbon that comes out of that one. But, yeah, and then one for the glass, one for the circuits, which are going to be over there, because that's where silicone is. And then we're going to have an extra one going for spare carbon. For, um... Oh yeah, the Mark 1 composites, which I have to manually get all the biomass, so that means I get to level half the planet. Yes. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get the rest of them set up, and I'll bring it back once time to get the printers in place. Okay, so i got everything all set up now, so I've got the four here. I've actually renamed them too, so i got uh, the frames miner, I have the plating miner, I have the composite Mark 1. That one, as you can see, goes over and crosses to the very end. Cause that's one at the very end. I gotta still set up a, uh, a docking hub for biomass containers. Yes, and then follow these two down here. And I have color coded them. Not that it really matters. I actually forgot to rename these ones. Uh, this one here is gonna be the circuits. So electrical. Uh, was electrical or electronic parts? I think it's electronic. parts. Okay, and then this one's going to be glass components. And then I'm going to name the containers as well, and name the printers as well. Try to get things a little more, a little more organized. Oh, memories. This time it's not half a kilometer long. Which brings us into here. So, these three are going to be taken out the system. I take the armory out. What is in the armory right now? A lot of stuff, of course. All right, but anyway, so what it's going to be is we're going to bring up the build menu here. We're going to pull out some printers, like so, and then I'm going to have it so the conveyor port on the back just happens to line up just like that, so I can have just a straight and then a T and then have it going up into another ceiling tile with a port on the ceiling. So that means we have to move, got to take everything out, which means I have no, I'm going to have inventory problems. And I have to figure this out. I think the best thing to do for me, go to the armory, make a pile of mess on the floor. Okay, and then put a small container down. And unfortunately, this isn't mi like Minecraft where you just stand here and let everything pick everything up. You actually have to place a little box down and complete it and deal with the lag to put all the stuff in. So I'm gonna get some printers set up and these other conveyors and uh, the, the floor. And I'll bring you back when it's time to start working upstairs. Okay, so I got them all set up here. So as you can see, I got the same thing with the printers, uh, frames printer and uh, plating printer here, and same with the uh, mechanical parts, uh, electronic parts, or yeah, electronic parts, glass components. I don't really know what I'm gonna do about the color. Like realistically, these should be the glass component or the circuits, and then I should probably have like glass black or white for the glass, but, you know, let's actually do that, let's change this to the light blue, and change the glass to the dark blue, just because. Alright, now for the ceiling. So, all I have to do is just make sure that the ceiling tile section of this, uh, let's actually get a white floor up here. And this is all I really gotta do. It's just get in there, like so. 
and that will actually connect to the conveyor port. Helps if I'm not stuck on stuff. Alright, so that is. Yes, in that corner. Alright, so I just. Yeah, anyway, I just do that, and I am going to leave uh, some sort of access point to get up there. I'm going to put the floor in, and then uh, bring you back up when it's time to get the fun stuff going on. Okay, so here's what I got so far. So yeah, again, I got these printers on this side here, and I set up these printers on this side. There's nothing connected underneath yet, but if I need to, it's got the port in the floor, so we can go ahead and do that. And it's got connection to up this upstairs storage. So now, what I got to do is build eight of six of those uh, up top here with a container floating above them. Uh, hopefully I have enough for the enough to do this. I do have this conveyor here, so I gotta figure out where I'm gonna place these too. Uh, eight by eight, which is a base foundation. Let's just check a base foundation, see what the footprint is on that, and just lay one down and see what we got. So where's that port? That port's right there. Ideally, I'd like to have it just coming right off the back. So if it starts here, so that's one, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it'd be here. So there'd be enough room to go in between for the piping that is going to go down to here. So let me go ahead and get these set up. Hopefully, I have enough to do all these hover pads. Uh, it's been a while since I've used 100 hover pads. But uh, yeah, I'll bring you back when I've got it all set up. Okay, so this is this is what I have here. So again, it's just like I got down there. I've got the one pusher pad that keeps it set to this position. And then we uh, don't actually have any power set up, but as soon as I power these two hover pads on, which are facing the right way, it's going to swing this connector over to here, which is going to connect to uh, a pipe going down the center. That's hooked up to, gonna have a connector port to each one of these. So then that way I can select what storage and it's all accessed from downstairs. So, with that being said, I'm gonna repeat this another six times for sure on this side. Get it all wired up and then I'll bring you back when it's time to get it going. Okay, there we go. We have, a, I have it all set up. So, I even got the containers named. So, we've got our basic frames here. We've got our plating, our mechanical parts, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I know it's raining. What can I do? Uh, so, yeah, it is all set up. As you can see, if you open up this container here, we'll be able to see the large container as well, which is also labeled gas and glass components. Uh, again, that box there is only to make sure that these actually work. So, now for the next thing. Um, this is going to be its full extent, so what I have to do is I have to make sure that my conveyor connectors actually line up here. And I was thinking about originally having like a T-section come down this way, but I think what I might do is go ahead and put a T-section here, go ahead and change that to orange. Ugh. Sometimes that tool just does not want to come up. And I had it on my hotbar already, of course I did. Okay, so this is actually going to feed downstairs into uh, the main access box. So now, I just probably just going to run a line of conveyors this way. Let's see what we got. Get another seven here. And one more. Yes. And go ahead with the elbows, which will be on six. And so on and so forth. I do have enough of these uh, quantum electronic circuits, or whatever they're called, to get enough uh, of these things made. Uh, I, think as, I think that's the only thing we actually need the gold for, so hopefully we'll get some out of those mines as we go along. So then, yeah, and I go here, and then we can stick a T-section here. 
Or if I want more control, I can always have it out here too, but I think this will do. So we'll go up here, and the T was on number one now. And like so. Oh, that's too high. And show me green. No. And why not? I think it has to be out a little bit more. So I think what I'll do is I'll try to get so that it's touching corner to corner. So I'll bring it in one and then probably keep it on the floor. Uh, I'll bring you back when I actually have a connection. There we go. Uh, it should work. As long as it doesn't clip when it touches, it uh, swings by. Uh, I'll actually do a quick test on this right now because I gotta do to wire all this stuff up to switchboards that I can feed down to switch boards down below because that's how we're actually gonna control this. And again, the whole purpose of this is to try to actually keep some sort of organization so when I want plates I don't have or when I want frames I don't have to dig through 20 different boxes trying to find all my plates okay so let's go ahead and I got all these set to grounded already or uh, hover mode so I'll grab the extension cord if I don't fall off the roof okay so let me hook you on that's reset. That's reset. Springs. Gotta love them. That's reset. And there we go. Oh. There's some lag. Okay. So now, um, I might as well just set up a switchboard on each one of them. Because they're going to have to go to another set of switchboards. So. Well, where did I have it? Did I have it on the bar? No, I didn't. And you will, I have noticed I will get that sort of the bouncing back and forth. Uh, it will happen, but it will get returned before it even gets close to the other connection. This is actually a good thing to know because originally I was going to sort of have it branch between the miner and the container and then over here so it disconnects from the miner and come over here but it's a good thing I did didn't do that because it's not going to stay in the one spot so you watch it, it'll come to about here and then it'll get returned but it will not get connection to here so I don't have to worry about anything actually getting flooded or uh, overfilled that's not where I want to put that so I'm just going to throw some switchboards down here quickly and then I'll check the first one there. See how that's doing. Uh, as far as the other stuff, I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do yet. I might uh, get more of these set up for the other things I'm going to be using a lot of, like the uh, reinforced frames and the Mark II plating. Uh, it will have to be something, though, that I probably have to manually feed. Uh, just because there are other things that we I would need Xanite for. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and connect these ones up. Whoa, lag spike. And for the time being, let's see if we can find the other switchboard. There it is, it's in there somewhere. Where is it? There it is. Oop. And I fell off the roof again. Thank God for a job. Thank God for a jetpack, huh? Okay, so now, if we go ahead and turn that on, as you can see, it make, clo comes over here, makes connections, so now it is actually connecting down to the box downstairs, which connects to this container, and the printer, and the miner. If I turn that off, it disconnects it. So then I'd have another one here, so I turn that one on and off. Well, it's actually going to be downstairs, these are just uh, junction boxes. But that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to get the wiring set up and I'm going to get the little box downstairs set up with a 
control panel and uh, like I said I've got room for six more over here which I probably will end up using but uh, let me finish this up and I'll bring you back with the results alright I'm just down to looking up the very last one uh, doesn't look pretty right now because I gotta get all these printers out of the way because they're not being used anymore and they're in the way and I don't have the inventory space to deal with it at the moment but oh, I forgot to hook this up to the power but this is going to be our main control pa control board here, so basically uh, you turn one of these on and open up the box and you have your parts. Uh, eventually I'm going to get another box that will that'll be on its own conveyor line going to probably a large container somewhere in the back just for bird building purposes. So at least I'll be able to have my supply. Alright, so let's give this a shot, see how it works. So let me get build vision out of here, so it's actually much smoother frame rate. And as you can see, I got them colored black, white. Uh, it's not green; it's actually this color here. But these damn these LEDs, I tell you. And then circuits, glass, and composites. So let's go ahead in here, open that up, and. Houston, we have a problem. Did finish that up, right? Yes, yes, that is good. And I think I forgot to turn something on. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, is it stuck? Oh, I think it's stuck. I think that's going on. if it's these blocks because sometimes you get sort of stuck to it there we go turn that off for now actually no we'll leave that on uh, that way I can get that block in there oh come on that's not the color I want there we go Okay, let's try this again. Just happens to be the one I try to try to use is the one that was stuck. All right, so we'll turn that off. Uh, let's try this one. So there we go. Now we got. Uh, oh yeah, that's going to be this container, the container that's in the L. Then we have glass components, glass components printer, glass components miner. That's actually supposed to say miner there. Alright, so that is that. Let's go for the frames. You can actually hear it engage. So there we go, there's our basic frames. Go over here, we have a Mark 1 plating. And so on and so forth. Oh, we have another another one that's stuck. Alright, so I gotta fix that. Oh, you see that? It actually updated afterwards. So it did move. So yeah, I am gonna have to make sure that nothing's stuck before we do this again. Uh oh. I broke it. So it happens when you mash all the buttons at once. But anyways, it's up and running. It's just some uh, stickiness issues with these blocks up here, which is not that big of a deal, but at least it's going to get some better automation. Actually, that's what we got to do right now. Right, right now. Okay, you. You're going to be doing as many frames and plates as you can do. Oh, that's why I was like... Why is shift not working? What is it connected to? Is it actually getting stuff from that? I did not know that. I thought I didn't know the machines actually took from the item dispensers. Anyway. Now yeah, I was trying to figure out why I wasn't filling up the inventory and then I realized that wasn't that I was shift clicking. 
All right, so I'm gonna get all this set up and uh, turn the printers on. Oops, that's not what I want. And I'll bring you back when we're actually producing something. Okay, I have all the miners running. I have all the printers all queued up, running to get ready to go. Uh, I saw the power indicators and I was like, I started thinking, oh my god, I'm out of power. And I realized that it was just this side that was turned on, not that side. But as you can see, we are crafting. We have 250 in the printers, which is good. Uh, the only thing I have to do is to make sure to avoid this box filling up is to make sure that these are turned off. Uh, the box that's actually on top of the um, the spring gate, I'll call it, uh, that box will fill up. So let's go ahead and see what we have for frames. And look at that. We have frames, we can see the miner. The miner will not fill the container because I have all the miners set to just to use its default inventory, so that is good. So at least the miners will keep up. So that's frames. Let's see what we have for glass, for instance. Oh yeah, that was the, the sticky one. Just because I can't access them doesn't mean they're not actually filling up. It just means that it's not turning, allowing me to actually see inside. So I'll have to... There we go. That one took a, little, that one took a second. There we go, we got plates coming in here. Why are we am I getting frames in here now? Oh, probably because I had two of them open just at the same time it was feeding through. But anyways, uh, what I'm gonna do between now and the next episode is I'm gonna start getting some, uh, maybe a couple more of these set up. Oh, did I leave you on? Uh oh, that's not a good, good thing. Oh, I did too. Yeah, but yeah, anyways, I'm going to start going through this, the main storage upstairs, maybe try to cut down some of these containers, because I don't think I'm going to need all 10 of them up there, but I'm going to try to util utilize the storage I have up here for, like, the odds and ends. Uh, like I said, this side's all completely disconnected right now. Uh, as far as this side goes, uh, let's see how we're doing for storage. Actually, a lot of these are empty, surprisingly. I have been processing a lot of stuff that I've been using a lot. But these two are com almost completely full. That one's two thirds. So it's not too bad. One of the main reasons was is the, the whole system had gotten flooded flooded by the miners with iron and carbon. And to clean that out, I just had the printers running. I had the miners shut off. So I was using whatever was up there instead of pulling what was out of the miners. But, anyways, we're going to call this episode here. Um, you know, like I said, I'm going to definitely get some clean up done around here. i got to get these out of the way and do a serious amount of uh, inventory management and take it from there. But anyways, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you next time in the lab. Later.